動かすからオラになってるやっとまだ出たえー、狼やよいちゃんだチワワはいいでしょうここにいては身が持ちませんわ下まで一気に滑り降りてしまいましょうせやなマリモ先輩マリモちゃんの敵は必ず敵って OK I want you to close your eyes for a good few minutes. And I mean really close, because I want you to use your imagination for this. Why、right, to have them closed? Good. Now, imagine an anime about a group of high school girls, and they're in a tennis club. In the tennis club, they only have one goal in mind to win the national tournament. Of course, like many in anime, there's going to be some roadblocks, bullies from the rival school. Parents who don't believe in your dreams, that one overly confident team from two schools over would think that way, but they're actually double what they do and are only there to provide common belief. And all the while, they'll discover more stuff about themselves, maybe find some romance along the way, as they play like Serena Williams on court to the championships and snag themselves a trophy. Now, take half of what I said, eat that out the window, and have all the main characters do it. What I've now said is a mostly accurate summary of an anime called Hecu. So, what in the flippin' heck is Tekyu? Well, as I said earlier, it's an anime where all the main characters snort. This show is incredibly wild. To describe this properly is a bit tricky, but I am able to pinpoint it down to at least two things it's either the visual representation of ADHD. Or an anime directed by Call Me Carson. Much like Super Cub, you probably never heard of this anime before, but unlike Super Cub, this show somehow managed to garner nine whole seasons. So it's fairly popular in Sunrise Land. When I first discovered this anime, it actually gave me a headache. This isn't a joke, I binge watched the whole thing, laughed myself silly, and immediately caught myself a headache. I thankfully wasn't serious, but still, this show is that wild. If you're the kind of person who likes watching sports anime but has a sense of humor of this cat. Huh? Well, you're in luck because this anime has nothing to do with sports, but has everything to do with activating your brain cells in the same vein as this goldfish. <laughs> Gen Z humor is something else. And I'm one of them. Trust me, this isn't your ordinary anime. Although, to be fair, Pop Team Epic exists. But that's a completely different beast altogether. So, uh, where did this anime even come from? Thank you, which, by the way, directly translates to Ennis, started out as a manga written by Roots, illustrated by Bio, and published in the comic Earthstar magazine beginning from February of 2012. And the manga makes no sense either. Yeah, it's pretty clear that this is a gag manga, but the humor is almost bordering on something Kandikuus would make. If Kandikuus was also starting. Wait, what? What do you mean he's already on? <laughs> 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 oh, right. That's why. <laughs> the manga quickly became popular, spawning 15 Tankobon volumes throughout its run, and it's pretty obvious why. The absurdist humor fits right in with Japan's own sense of humor, and the eye can get really wacky. You can take any panel from this manga out of context, and it still wouldn't make sense. One big advantage to reading the manga version, though, is that you can actually read it at your own pace. You can take on the multiple gags the manga has, sometimes appearing back to back, and just have a good laugh. It's really the kind of manga you just pick up and have a good time if, say, you're having a bad time at school. Though it's not exactly a surprise when Teki gets picked up for an anime adaptation five whole months after the first manga volume launches. This is genuinely the first time I've seen a manga get adapted to an anime this quickly. Heck, they even straight up announced the anime adaptation by the end of the first freaking volume. Of course, they needed a studio for them to actually make the anime. So the publisher shopped around for one before finding a tiny, fledgling studio called MAPPA. Ah! Yeah, MAPPA. That MAPPA. The same MAPPA who made Yuri on Ice, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Chainsaw Man. Though, to be fair, this was 2012, and MAPPA really was a tiny, fledgling studio. They were just about a year old when its founder broke off from an out studio of Madhouse and had only made a total of one anime and an unreleased film in the works. But production was dire for that unreleased film and they needed at least more than 23 yen to stay afloat. So they needed to produce some anime to get additional funding and Tech you saved like a perfect target. The manga was popular and they could easily make in the dough to produce that film of theirs which weirdly actually went against the whole mantra of making anime that's not totally marketable. 
I don't know about them, but at least they got that extra yen into the budget after snagging Tekyu. And thus, MAPPA and Earthstar Entertainment, the publishers of Comic Earthstar, inked a deal to create a 12 episode gag anime based on Tekyu in August of 2012, with it releasing in October of the same year. And this is where the insanity begins. So the plot of Tekyu is... There is no plot. It's a gag anime, why do you think there'd be a coherent plot? But that doesn't mean that there's nothing that at least ties this anime together. The show revolves around four high school girls, straight woman Yuri, short and bubbly Kane, local perfect Manimo, and Rish Bish National Bookstore <coughs> as they run their local high school's tennis club while doing everything but tennis. That's it. That's all you need to know in terms of plot. The anime doesn't need it. It instead feeds off of... Being completely unhinged. One scene you'll see the girls actually try to do a tennis match, and then the next they're making Doriaki with a gong and illegally obtain Tagami. Oh, and the tag is still alive. The whole show pretty much just works like that. And just like the manga, sometimes the jags, 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 yeah. jacks. Woo! Digital circus. Drown yourself in the digital lake! We're keeping that it. <laughs> the whole show pretty much just works like that. And just like the manga, sometimes the gags show up back to back. Oh, and here's the kicker. Each episode of Tech you is two minutes long. So not only are the gags back to back, they come flying at your eyeballs faster than Max Verstappen winning a fourth WDC. That joke's topical. And because each episode of Tech you is two minutes long, that also means that each season totals its runtime to around 24 minutes long, or the equivalent of one episode of Super Cup. And there's nine of them! Talk about speedrunning an anime. Joe came at like this. Now, because there's no plot, there's not much to write home about in regards to this anime. But the guys are really silly. Like, seriously, there's a lot of enjoyable moments that partially caused my headache, but also made me like this anime. Like the scene in Season 2, Episode 4, where the title of the show cleverly changes from Tekyu to Takyu, because they decided to play table tennis that day. It's so silly Yui even lampshades it. <laughs> or this scene in Season 2, Episode 7. <laughs> Uh. This scene just cracks me up because of how abrupt everything is. It reminds me of Bill Woods' Shorty Awards acceptance speech. Thank you! And yeah, National Bookstores' dad is Colonel Sanders. Don't question it. Anime logic. Or how about this scene in Season 4 Episode 1 where the gang shows Stormy and the Alien around the school. But because of the two minute cap, National Bookstore redirects Tomori to a working website containing the school's map. But not before she tries to kick her out. And yeah, there's an alien anime girl in the cast. Don't question it. Anime logic. Or how about this KM Ephesus in season 9? To be honest, I never watched K-On, but I have a feeling this is what would normally happen in the show. Oh, and aside from that map joke from earlier, they very frequently shattered the fourth wall. Such as when Mayamo advertised their existing Tankobon run in Season 2, or when Mayamo pulls up a QR code that redirects to the show's website advertising more Tankobon volumes, or this scene in Season 3 when National Bookstore's blonde hair was a result of an animation error with notes to fix it. Plus, they even have a whole turban arc in one part of the show's run. I mean, every sports anime should have one, right? But this being Tekyu, the art lasted one whole episode. Oh, and good luck trying to read the subs because everything moves so quickly you'll be needing to pause the video frequently in order to get even the smallest of jokes. That also partially caused my headache. And here's the kicker. Tekyu has a surprisingly good OST selection. Yeah, even though the intros only account for like one fourth of the whole episode, they're actually really solid bangers. Nearly every song is almost bordering on actual idol music, which makes sense since a star entertainment actually deals with that kind of thing. And the first season's OP was written by Roots themselves, so you give it a more personal touch. What's even better is that every full song is longer than a typical episode of Tekyu. Now there is one thing I didn't like about this anime and it's the fact that it can get really lewd sometimes. Now there's nothing wrong with lewd stuff, I think if it's played right it can be a tasty little treat. Plus I'm 23, I'm no stranger to the occasional smacks joke. But the main issue is that almost every character is subject to this while being canonically under 18. Please stop. Yeah I get that this is Japan's thing and it's humor and the sen or whatever, but I'm Filipino. Not Japanese. This makes me really uncomfortable, especially watching some of the OPs. And yeah, Tekyu being Tekyu didn't beat so Fort Wall breaks about the show not being that kind of anime, but it still makes me uncomfortable knowing that being not Japanese, they're underage. 
it's okay. They're just drawings anyway. You can enjoy their jobs regardless. Yeah, fair point, but what if that drawing blatantly tells you that they're underage? I'm not going to open up this can of worms. Reddit has already done just that. But I really find sexualizing these characters to be a little off-putting. Like, I get Fujiko Mine, but not Yu Yoshimoto. Gotta put up a boundary in there somewhere. So I just tend to skip these jokes and still have a good time watching because everything is so compressed you can still easily pick up where you left off once you skip. Plus there's a ton of episodes that don't even have these jokes and they tend to be some of my favorites. Either way though, Taiku is a great shut off your brain kind of show. It's the kind of show where you can just sit back and just... Poor cat. That's the same effect as the manga where it uplifts you when you're having a bad day in the most absurdest way possible. And of course the Japanese audience agrees. That's the reason why the show lasted 9 seasons. Since the release of the Takyu anime, sales for the manga skyrocketed, a best one themed after Raimo's ramen episode popped up, and the fanbase started to explode. As for MAPPA, well the anime proved to be such a success that not only had they finished that film of theirs, they've also started accepting offers to do more anime, starting with a reboot slash continuation of Hajime no Ippo, and two more anime based on a horror manga and a video game respectively. And because MAPPA started to take on more anime projects, Suddenly, they got no other hands to hold on tech you, so they handed up production of season 4 to another tiny fledgling company called Millapunze, who would eventually go on to create the 2016 adaptation of Berserk, which was apparently terrible, but that's beside the point. And boy, did Millapunze go full hot with tech you. Not only did they clean up the animation and made it wackier, but they also went as far as producing spin offs. Two of them. The first was Takamiya Nasuno Bukusto Atesu, first appearing in 2015 with the appropriate subtitle of Takyu Spin Off. It focuses on Nasuno Bukusto and Yui's younger brother Yota and their hijinks as they spend summer vacation at the Takamiya household with Yota being Nasuno Bukusto's butler. And yeah, Yui has a younger brother. Not exactly anime logic, but he was seen a few times in season 3 and now he's got his own show. That's cool, I guess. And the second spin-off is Usakame, first premiering in 2017 and featuring the tennis club of the titular Usakame High, who just so happens to be the rivals, quote-unquote, of the main characters. They technically appeared during the tournament arc in Season 3, but were formally introduced in an OVA in between Season 6 and 7. The one thing that I've noticed is that the show is just a tad slower than Tekyu. Heck, a typical Usakame episode is double a typical Tekyu episode. It's pretty okay, the jokes were good, the storyline's great, and the art style is pretty unique. But because of the slower pacing, it frequently suffers from something that I like to call transition hacking. Take for example the scene in episode 3. <laughs> Notice the awkward gap in between the jokes, like there was this very slight pause, like you're stopping for a quick gulp of your spit after talking for a prolonged period of time. That's transition hanging, and it's a bit off-putting. Maybe it's because I'm comparing Usakami to Tekyu, which should be understandable since it's a spin-off. Heck, the Tekyu girls even appear in episodes 5 and 9, but all by itself it's a pretty great gag anime, and quite a few people even prefer Usakami to Tekyu. So if you think Tekyu is a bit too much, well, here's an alternative. The transition hanging is going to be inevitable though. Yeah, out of 10. And just like that, Tekyu became a very well-loved anime in Japan. Heck. Blu-rays, DVDs, and OST albums are easily available on sites like Yahoo Auctions. And while prices are low for some individual Blu-ray releases and manga, it shows how ubiquitous Tekyu was back then when it aired. However, the international audiences didn't really like the fast-paced nature of the show that much, with some suggesting that the language barrier might be to blame. And frankly, that's fair. The back button is your best friend. And even up until now, people are still waiting for season 10. Even Yui wonders if they're gonna get it. Sadly though, this never materialized. Despite Milopunze juggling both Tekyu and Berserk at the same time, they never got the chance to make a season 10. Heck, they never got the chance to make a season 2 of Uzakame. Apparently it has something to do with the production company that the voice actors are under contract with downsizing and ultimately letting them go due to the voice acting department closing. So despite there being a good chunk of material left for season 10, it will likely never get made. Especially now that Boots and Pew have already moved on from Taku to do other projects, with the final Tankapon volume releasing in 2018. It's not so bad though, back in 2021 the two returned to make one last epilogue showing the girls 10 years older and not having changed one bit. Still. Nine seasons. It's rather impressive for a seasonal anime. 
total of 108 episodes were made along with a handful of OVAs over the years. That's, what, one One Piece arc? And with the popularity that Techie sustained, it could be argued that without it, we probably wouldn't get adaptations of Yui on Ice or Chainsaw Man or Jujutsu Kaisen. It molded MAPPA into who they are today, and from the tiny fledgling studio that they were back in 2012, they're now an anime powerhouse. Same can be said for Milaponze. They're still pumping out quality stuff to this day. Apparently that's a lie! Hey there, Post Production Vani here. I just have a couple things to say about Milaponze. Uh, cause yeah, a lot of things have changed ever since I first wrote that script of last year, and you can probably tell cause I have a whole lot of uh, fixing up in post, as they say. But anyway, yeah, apparently Berserk is not the only bad anime that Milaponzi has produced. Apparently after wrapping up Tekyu and Berserk, they just started making mid-anime left and right. And I don't know why. Yeah, a lot of people say that it's either mid or bad, and I just genuinely don't know why. I checked the mal reviews, they seem okay, but some of the written reviews that they left behind is like, nah, go skip this one, it's not that good. Still, pretty funny to think that in the entirety of Milipunzi's catalog, the best anime is Takyu. <laughs> anyway, let's go end this video, it's already too long. It's nice to look back at one company's catalog and see how much they've changed over the years. It shows how much they've evolved and how they'll continue to evolve. So thanks Takyu for giving MAPPA a chance to shine. I'm just hoping that MAPPA will take care of the artists and animators. Oh.